greetings. Uh, this is uh, Diplomatic Corner. Uh, we are in we are Nahu TV. Uh, today uh, we are out of uh, the city parameters. We are in Holata Walmara, and uh, we are about to visit a seedlings farm, which is owned and operated by M M Yossi for short, Mr. Mr. Yoram Peretz. He has a company called the Gilbao Seeds and Seedlings Company, and uh, they are, you know sharing and giving seedlings and they are a showcase of the Israeli-Ethiopian relations. So uh, stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for welcoming us, really. Most welcome, Professor. Uh, to explain about Gilboa platform, I call it platform because it's a diversified business. And the idea is to use what we see here on the ground as a model for uh, uh, farmers in Ethiopia. Mostly we focus on the local market, even though we have uh, uh, projects out of the country. And I will uh, later on elaborate and explain more about that. But these 20 hectares are demonstration plot for knowledge transfer, creating awareness and training that are conducted here on a regular base uh, on this ground. Uh, we, had, we had visitors, students, fruit experts and so on is first we'll go to the citrus field we have 11 varieties of oranges lemon pomelo mandarin and so on all are imported from israel okay. then we'll come here to this this section i will show you the residential department these seedlings are are with the aim of planting in addis or cities inside the cities those who doesn't have uh, land for planting of the, the trees. The trees. Then we'll go, we'll go through, <coughs> through the farm and you will see the, the nursery okay. uh, department where we are producing over 350,000 seedlings a year, okay. uh, top quality. Um, so through the visit, I will explain on each crop. We are growing uh, over 75 varieties of fruits. What? Wow. Like the oranges, lemon, lemon, pomelo, mandarin, and so on. Pomegranate, almonds, uh, wow. peach, nectarines, peach. grapes, everything is here. Wow. Just Great. name it. Everything is under one umbrella. I will show you the generations on the tree. You see the small cluster of just, uh, yeah. you know, set the fruits. Yeah. These are wow. still flowers and you have mature fruits to be picked. Yeah. Okay? okay. By the way, they used to say citrus, lowland crop and so on. Yeah. It's exactly what I tried to explain uh, earlier, Professor, mm -hmm. about this category of, you know, highland, lowland is, is flexible category. We don't have to, uh, to take it for granted. Because even crop like peach that it's deciduous yeah. and it needs cold units and so on to set fruits is being grown in the uh, Dead Sea Valley in Israel, 400 meters below sea level. Where it's a bit hot. Yeah. Its average wow. temperature is 45 over there. And a peach grows there. And peach grows there. Wow. It comes to the market three, four months earlier than the peach that grows in the highland area. So they have advantage of high price and their quality is exactly like the fruits that come from the highland. It's only agro-practice method and matching of varieties to the current condition. Nothing per se to say this fruit is for highland, this fruit is for it's, high, it's old fashioned it's category. Old, old fashioned category. Old fashioned category. It can be grown in uh, literally everywhere in Ethiopia. Then. We wish, uh, Professor, yeah. many modern nurseries like us to come to emerge in Ethiopia yeah. because the gap is huge, the potential is big. The Gil Gilboa Company yeah. cannot serve 1% of the need 
of Ethiopia. True. We need hundreds of nurseries, yeah. modern one, that produce quality seedlings yeah. and also are able to provide follow-up consultancy to the clients. Unless and otherwise a consultancy and follow-up follow is exam. integrated part, there is no future for those seedlings. Most of the farmers have lack of knowledge and so on, how to look after the crop. And yeah. So that input of growing protocols and so on is mandatory. So who are your customers? We are dealing with the private sectors okay. that these days are emerging all over the country from south to north and so on. Okay. And we are dealing with governmental institutes for in argument's sake uh, around Addis. Okay. The um, Water Authority of Addis I see. are uh, very big clients of our company around Lagadade, Gefersa and Dere, around the water dam the water of Addis. Uh -huh. Thousands of thousands of trees uh -huh. And now farmers are coming yeah. to buy seedlings because they see yeah. they see what we did in in a very short time around the lake. So um, uh, this is example of governmental. And like I said, we also put Ethiopia on the map of exporting uh, uh, fruit seedlings. Uh -huh. We did uh, three years ago. Uh, very nice project in Kigali in uh, Rwanda, Rwanda. Okay. Um, okay. and that, that project has become the national nursery of Rwanda, so now it's duplicating and producing uh, uh, seedlings to all over the country, even though it's a very small country. Yeah. And uh, like I said, we are about to initiate an immediate project in Malawi, okay. two projects actually, okay. a governmental one. Malawi. Already we are on, a, on the stage of uh, yeah. You know, uh, signing the agreement, mm -hmm. and uh, we have a project in Burundi, project in uh, in uh, West Africa, in Namibia. So wow. we are we it's are funding. spreading 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 yeah. uh, all over yeah. the continent. Mm -hmm. But still, our heart mm -hmm. and our focus yeah. is here in Ethiopia. So we wow. wish first to develop Ethiopia, our yeah. home base where yeah. we are where we are based. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Professor, we yeah. came from the uh, lime. Yes to the uh, mandarin. It's okay. actually Israeli patented variety called Michal. Michal. Yes. Okay. Um, a small tree like this might produce over 50 kilo, as it is now. 50 kilo per tree. So again, we are back to the square one, what we talked earlier. Uh -huh. This country have all the potentials to grow everything. None. And I will keep on saying it until True. people yeah. will, will believe deep inside that Ethiopia has the potential to grow all fruits. Yeah. We don't have to import uh, apples from South Africa and grapes from uh, New Zealand yeah. and oranges from China and so on and pomegranate from India. Everything can grow here and we can become the exporters to the world. There is enough land, enough water, enough manpower. Uh, the climate is the, cli the climate is favorable very for growing everything. Drinking quality water, True. amazing climate True. condition, fertile soil, True. and ample source of water. So we have to push this gari to make it a very successful one. A good way of putting it. Yes, yeah. exactly. ምክንያቱም <laughs> Ilan and Yam Taiguan. Casugano, the Brazil Timato, Casamato, Nazibet, Crate, Carali, Tacarache, Casuno Micafluli, Zino. Sarajo Marcut, Gane, Yoram Gara, Litish Sidis, Yoram Malatlenia and Dabat, and that's a reward the moon, the Lila Bal after Dill. Guzo Alaftoche in Allen, in Nakalen. Yoram Lanya, Lane Bichadel, Lamulu Saratanuch. Ziggy Bustalus Saratanuch, and Dabat Valai, Bakabat Valai, Lunichel. 
ሰዎች ሲቸገሩ ወደ እሱ ይዳሉ እሱም ደሞ ሰው ችግሩን ሳይ ሳይናገር ራሱ እንደዚህ ፊታቸውን አይተው ያቃል ሰው ለመርዳት እንጂ አንዳንድ እንደ በቃ ይሄ ነው ብለን ለማናገር እንደራሴ በጣም በቃ ቃላቶች እኔ ይወራም ለሁሉም ሰራተኞች ማረጉት በጣም ተላላለን አሁን እዚ ከጀመርን ከሱ ጋራ እርሻው ከጀመረ ወደ 8 አመት ነው እኛም ከሱ ጋራ እንደዛ ነው እየሰራናል ነው እንደ ቤተሰብ ነው እንጂ እሱ እንደ ባላፍቶ ነው ከሰራተኞች ላይ ርቆ ሰራተኞቹም ደሞ እርሻውን እንደራሳቸው ነው የሚያውቱ what we see here uh, professor is uh, the field of oranges and another variety of lemon uh -huh. uh, you can see how loaded the trees are with yeah. fruits wow. very small trees yeah, very small uh, if you pick everything at once and you you wait it's about 35 40 kilo easily right now on average on the trees so it can show what is the potential Uh, look on this cluster professor okay the branch is about to to break wow look how many, it, yeah how many how many fruits? so many oranges yes the entire tree is full of fruits wow uh, these are israeli varieties israeli varieties last week mm. we imported from israel a new red orange not orange this color but red like blood color red the blood, okay okay very sweet We grafted our seedlings. Next year, with God's help, yeah. we'll have the first production. Wow. Then we will start multiplying seedlings for the local farmers. So we are introducing new varieties, patented one, almost all all the time. Every year, we introduce new varieties. We have this department to grow. pomegranate orange lemon avocado oh. and peach oh. so it's on first stage it's in plastic bag then it goes to a pot, pot. Okay. when it's mature and grows to a big size tree mm -hmm. fruit yielding tree yeah. it's ready to be delivered to the to the buyers in uh, Addis uh, so eventually even that uh, sector of you know homeowners will have the opportunity even if they don't have land they have baranda yes. they can grow it in the baranda and it's it's growing to a beautiful size in our house in Addis we have all the fruits you see in the farm mm -hmm. growing inside pots and we are picking our fruits right from there. from the from the pots wow. from the trees Wonderful. so Wonderful. we prove it's it's working yeah. Yeah. we provide those those people that are supposed to buy the the yeah. trees yeah. with all the growing instructions so they can they can look after it rather than having some uh, uh, empty wow. garden or exactly. empty baranda it's, it's, it's good for the eye it, it's good not for, empty exactly. Aesthetic, aesthetics also it's good for the eye exactly. the bees will come it looks good it's changing it's the, changing environment. the environment. the color look look that the taste Just will be amazing yes, professor so what what you close but uh, yeah. because it can make it I, shall I hold it okay please yeah look. you can see the color the color ruby red more yes. bergen i don't know yeah. it's israeli variety called ako it's patented Ako. variety ako yes like i uh, said earlier many of our varieties mm -hmm. here in the farm are patented but because of the relationship Ethiopia Israel mm. uh, they don't feel that it's uh, in competition mm. to grow these varieties here okay we took plums variety the scion scion is this part the upper part okay. we cut the coda the cambium okay. around the tree mm -hmm. and we did grafting It's three months after grafting. It was just the shoot that you see here. It become a tree. Three months after. Next year, 
Mm-hmm. Already it will be in full production because mm-hmm. the tree, mm-hmm. the root system is well developed. Develop. It's very strong. Mm-hmm. So it boosts, it grows very, very fast. Very fast. Wow. Next year, there will be production of plums, uh, prim on this tree. On this. Professor, please come in. Watch your step. Okay. What we see here mm. is a, a peach orchard oh. uh, with uh, about 23 varieties of peach. Mm-hmm. There are some early varieties that come, for example, in December. We harvest in December. Mm-hmm. There are varieties we harvest in January, February. And there are varieties we harvest in March, April. Okay. So it's, it's, it's like stretching the season of harvesting from one or two months into five months approximately, uh, which is big advantage. Plus, uh, we prove which varieties are the highest yield and the best product and so on. What you see here, every tree has produced this season, the last season, average of over 100 kilo of fruits. When the fruits are, the tree is loaded, yeah. these branches are almost touching the ground. Wow, wow. Very heavy, beautiful peach, and uh, the market is starving for this kind of product, exactly. Professor. Exactly. Uh, why importing peach from South Africa? It's a hard a, currency as well. You know? ha- spending hard That's currency, right. Which is making people pay here fortune to buy a single kg of these fruits, plus, the shelf life is yeah. counted from the time the farmers in South Africa exactly. has picked the fruits yes. until it reached Ethiopia. Pass yeah. all this voyage in yes. a fridge container, yeah. already half of the shelf life is gone. It's gone, exactly. And the supermarkets will present it, display it in their uh, fridge, and you start counting, you remain with few days only for very expensive product. So, while well, we can produce it you here. You can grow it grow here. It, here. It, yeah. it grows beautifully. This small orchard has produced maybe 60, 70 tons of fruits. Hey, Burtukan, Mtana Freyuk, Israel Nemata. Ihe tatakulo bandwaru iwatal. Aun hehnya bandwar ke samen tano. Iyo no. Ah. Bandwaru tatakulo cid lapsan. Sir kata la kalabas bala baru aitan hendak kala kaza bala iyan dan nuk asbelan nana soalla. Asetan kazan ka ten ka sost ka sos war bala way ka arat menam aitan grafting besar bala. Aisy. Kazi. Malmelan nama nak tak? This is the variety of the orange. Before it was just rootstock without variety. After we did the grafting, this shoot came. From this moment, it's orange tree. It's no more rootstock. Now, grafting normally in Israel is being done very low. This grafting is done because of the methods of irrigation in Ethiopia, ferro irrigation. When you are irrigation in canals, Mm. the flood of the soil will cover the the plants. Uh So not the soil not to reach the grafting point, we did the grafting very high. It has to be higher. Yes, we did it very high. The next stage, other group will fill soil inside. The next stage, like the girls over there, will take it inside the greenhouse. Thank you so much uh, for uh, really uh, uh, for uh, allowing us to uh, to visit uh, Gilbao, your uh, your your farm. You took the time to really show us around, you know, the whole, the entire process and what you have here. And it's really remarkable uh, what you do. And what's the idea behind all this uh, to start off our uh, interview? Uh, Professor, I, um, 
I reside in Ethiopia for the last 18 years. I came as a businessman at the beginning, but when I get to know the culture, the mentality of the people, the challenges of the ordinary people, especially in remote places, I was uh, looking for a business that can combine spirit behind it to change people's life. And one of the um, field that can affect uh, millions of people in Ethiopia is the fruit sector. And I saw that varieties are degraded varieties in the country, they are uh, lagging behind and there is a, a serious lack of knowledge mm -hmm. in growing, in handling of the fruits and so on. And uh, definitely after uh, residing in the country, I get to know of the potential of Ethiopia in terms of the natural resources you have here. Um, like, you know, I came from Israel, it's a, a semi-arid country, almost uh, you can call half of it is desert, more than half. And we learn uh, how to grow the best fruits and vegetables in those uh, harsh conditions. Uh, so I thought to myself, it's quite a shame that uh, we cannot grow the same products here, the same crops, mm -hmm. with the heavenly conditions available in Ethiopia, uh, with uh, fertile soil, with pleasant climate condition, mm -hmm. and uh, with the ample source of drinking quality uh, water, mm -hmm. uh, and of course the manpower available here. Uh, so combining all this together, uh, I, I have the great a faith that Ethiopia can become uh, a major uh, fruit growing country in the region mm -hmm. and definitely become a, a self independence in terms of uh, the local consumption mm -hmm. and uh, export uh, top quality fruits to neighboring country including the Middle East country uh, taking into consideration the seasons that Ethiopia comes with the production on opposite season to South Africa and to the Middle East. You can also consider that as a window of opportunity in terms of the marketing and the value of the goods. So describing all of this, I'm saying at this stage, we didn't even explore the tip of the iceberg in terms of the potential of Ethiopia as a fruit growing country. Let me take you to another side of the question and that is, uh, how about challenges, of course? It's a developing country, it's a poor country. Uh, so many uh, challenges might be there. If you could uh, relate to us some of the challenges that you are faced with. It definitely uh, challenges are there. Uh, first, understanding the mentality in each and one of the growing area where we are active in uh, it. <coughs> it's different mentality, different culture. Second, changing the mood of thinking of farmers that are used to a crop that is rain-based. Mm -hmm. uh, you can consider it as a cash crop because the duration is very short, few months. To divert those farmers into fruit production that takes few years until they are at optimal uh, yield and production, uh, it's quite a challenge to convince those farmers. But I'm saying Ethiopia is so vast and there is millions of hectares that are uh, not at use, like on mountains and so on, that with a, a bit of efforts creating a terrace on the mountain, they can capture the rain and have that soil prevented from being erosion to the, to the rivers and so on. Uh, plus, use those, those millions of hectares for a, a production of fruits that can change people's life, both in terms of the, the diet available on the table plus uh, uh, issues of malnutrition and so on. So you are, you are tackling uh, a lot of critical issues at once, plus dealing mm -hmm. with uh, uh, sustainable land management that is a, a big challenge due to the rainfall in Ethiopia and so on. The mountains are exposed, so fertile soil travel at the end to, to Egypt mm -hmm. through the Nile. Yeah. Uh, 
to prevent that, rather than planting just any kind of trees, mm -hmm. uh, put in selected resilient crop, mm -hmm. uh, such as pomegranate, uh, fig, and um, uh, almonds. You can definitely enrich the, the food the diets of uh, remote uh, growing farmers and create a better income for them and plus properly utilize land in the country. Uh, land that is not at use at the moment. Great, great. Um, honestly, I'm amazed by uh, the variety of fruits that you have here, you know, coke, uh, peaches, apple, pome, we call it, it and uh, figs, uh, and so many uh, fruits. Uh, and uh, what is uh, amazing for me is uh, you have proved it that it can grow also in the, we call it Kola uh, Wena Dega Dega, in, in the higher plateaus like here, as you have, uh, as, as I recall, 2,450 meters, somewhere around there yes. is your farm. Mm -hmm. And you have proved literally all, I would say, almost all fruits are, are, are growing. Uh, what used to be that some would only grow in the lowland areas. So uh, how, uh, how, uh, how, to what extent have you found resonance, you know, to put the message across that uh, it can be done to the public and to the government officials and the like? The way, the way we do it um, is creating a platform which by we bring over either students from all over the country uh -huh. that can spread the message or uh, fruit experts from all over the countries or we, we also uh, conduct <coughs> farmers days on the farm here which we bring farmers from far distance organized with the transport and everything what we like to say seeing is believing when people get to to hear something they have the doubts if if this is too much of imagination or it's the reality, it can be done, or um, um, the guy is just uh, uh, telling us uh, some stories. Mm -hmm. But when they come and see with their own eyes whatever we created here in Oleta mm -hmm. on the 20 hectares given, us by, uh, mm -hmm. given to us by the government, mm -hmm. they understand that everything is possible. And uh, just in seven years, uh, time since we get the land to see what you see here, this uh, uh, almost 80 varieties of fruits, it can prove everyone that it can be done everywhere here in the country. And this was the most important things to create the awareness, the uh, understanding that it's feasible for the vast majority of the farmers in Very the country. True. Very true. I just want to hear your, your opinion based on reality, of course, that Ethiopia, you have told, you have shared that it has a good chance of being an export, uh, you know, exporting fruits in, in the neighborhood and to the Middle East. 20 years, 25 years down the line, could we see Ethiopia exporting alone coffee, next to coffee, next to uh, uh, other cash crops? Professor, uh, I think there will be a day not even 25 years from now, maybe mm -hmm. earlier than that, that we might sit together and remember these questions and uh, the way I, I answer it. And you will understand where I took that confidence mm -hmm. from. Uh, I think that coffee in the future, in terms of the, the parts it takes in the generating foreign currency mm -hmm. to the country, yeah. will be neglectable compared to foods. First, proximity to the market. Mm -hmm. Not to repeat again all the natural resources and conditions available in mm -hmm. Ethiopia. Secondly, Ethiopia has invested a great amount of money in creating the proper facility to handle the fruits and vegetables. Uh, starting from the cargo terminal in Addis, state of the art technology, with all the fridge uh, facility and so on, the cooling facility. Uh, second, in the dry port in Mojo, mm -hmm. putting up a similar facility with cold, uh, cold store facility. And uh, ending with the railway, remodeling the railway to uh, Djibouti, Djibouti, to be able to, to have 
uh, reefer containers floating out of the country on a, on a daily basis. So all this together, uh, the, the logistic yeah. plus from the other end, the potential of growing the crops in the country, yeah. bring it to a, a conclusion of Ethiopia becoming a major player. Uh, plus, I would say a big plus is the window of opportunity, the timing of picking the fruits here in Ethiopia. Everything you saw here on the, on the ground is opposite to those countries that are intends to import the, the fruits. So you come to the market when they are starving for this fresh produce. Uh, thank you. Uh, you have answered my question. Uh, Ethiopia uh, has started the modernization process and one of them is in the educational sector and now we have you know, public and private um, you know, universities and colleges uh, here and there in many parts and um, I know as a former academic that agriculture is one priority sector by the government policy, in the government policy as well as in the universities. Uh, so do, 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 do you get some visitors, students who who, who, who learn or who major in horticulture to come and seek your good advice, your wisdom, your experience? Uh, definitely, Professor. We host on a regular basis students from all over the country, uh, starting from the north in uh, Wolo University okay. to uh, students even around here from the local uh, 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 college here in Holeta. Okay. to uh, students from Gawane uh, College Gawane. and so on. Okay. Uh, so we host uh, students on a regular base, but I, ha I would like to use this opportunity to share an idea that okay. I have in my mind okay. concerning a properly transfer of knowledge, especially to those uh, uh, students that are involved in, uh, in agriculture um, as a major. What I think that needs to be created to, to duplicate whatever we are doing here is to create small nurseries at the campuses themselves. Okay. And to put this topic of fruit production and nursery and so on as a part of the curriculum of the students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a single visit to the farm is just good as exposing the students mm -hmm to whatever is possible mm -hmm. in the country, but to transfer uh, knowledge properly, it's involved in theoretical courses and practical courses that yeah. should be conducted mm -hmm. within the campus itself. And I think the best way of doing it is duplicating the nursery of Gilboa within major campuses in the country. That way the knowledge transfer will be done properly, plus it will be done faster because you will expose ma more and more students True. to the activity we are doing here that can help later on. The second step mm -hmm. is those students getting fund after graduating mm -hmm. and creating union with yes. small farmers yes. and getting the boost or the help, initial, initial help from the government to kick off their business. Mm -hmm. And then you can call it, you know, a big success. When knowledge is being implemented, you complete the circle. But if knowledge remains knowledge without any use of it, uh, it's very pity, it's very, very sad. So I think eventually those students, uh, instead of seeking for uh, employment and so on, becoming their self-employee, motivated, freshly graduated yeah. with uh, fresh knowledge what, and so on. Uh, what do you think, if I interrupt you for a second, uh, how about microfinance, can it play a big role, I think? Definitely. Microfinance yeah. is one of the, the uh, vision or the channels that can fund the activity of uh, yeah. those uh, freshly graduated. Yeah. Secondly, I would say the government has big rules in dictating for NGOs on what to spend their, uh, their budget and if such thing is being uh, incorporated, government is allocating land, funding the students in a way to kick off their initial business with uh, local farmers. Yeah. Also uh, NGOs can tap into it yeah. and put some facility as a value chain product, yeah. Yeah. put yeah. for them small pack houses with fridge uh, facility yeah. and so on then 
the chain is completed. So, wonderful. Uh, I wouldn't let you go. Uh, we're coming uh, to a close of our interview without asking you about family. You have been here 18 years. And uh, uh, could you tell us about the, the, your family? I understand you travel back and forth to Israel, four hours by air, uh, in the neighborhood. If you could share with us. Thank you. Yeah, I travel back and forth uh, because I have a father in Israel and uh, my sisters and my brother. Uh, but uh, my family is here in Addis. I reside in Ethiopia. Uh, I can gladly say that uh, in two years' time I will be two decades in the country. And uh, my wife, she's Ethiopian. Uh, we share the culture, uh, you know, of uh, Ethiopia in the house. We celebrate. Uh, the Jewish holidays, the Ethiopian holidays. Uh, so, always I'm saying I'm half Ethiopian, but uh, it's not by blood, it's by, by wish, by desire, and uh, the way that I care for the, for the people. That's how I, I see it. Thank you, really. Uh, thank you, uh, <coughs> Mr. Peret. And I really admire and uh, appreciate personally what you do. I wish you success. Thank you. Uh, uh, may all your dreams and uh, visions come true. And uh, what you do is very, very appreciated. I wish uh, that Gilboa also will be a success and be replicated in all parts of Ethiopia. And um, this is just a glimpse of what you do. You have created, created literally a paradise that surrounds us. And we do hope and wish and, uh, that uh, this will be replicated by others as well. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your hospitality. Nadamu Amarinya and the Michulu, Ethiopian Kwankwa, Mirai Kwankwa, and the Mimokrak Aloha. Tinish Bamarinya Visana Putu, but I'm the Silenian. Professor Salamatachu, but I'm the Silal. La Niade Rajet, but I'm Tilik Nagarno. And I'm with you, Yan Yasarak, Yalip Saran, and then La Business Bicha Idalo. Thank <laughs> Now back, back in English, uh, this is, is a program of a Diplomatic Corner. Uh, I'm in, in, in the farm uh, owned and run by uh, our, our, our guest, uh, Mr. Peret de Gilboa farm. And uh, why I decided to bring this uh, farm and uh, to have uh, the good gentleman as, as a guest was none other than to see that diplomacy is not only politics. Diplomacy has also other good aspects like economic interaction, cultural, agricultural, trade, tourism and the like. It is in that spirit. And he, as an Israeli uh, living and working now in, in Ethiopia, is a product of the bilateral relations between the two countries. So it is in this spirit that uh, we decided to have his show. So thank you. Uh, please continue watching us, uh, Diplomatic Corner. We'll be having more and more interesting guests in the future. And for now, it's me, uh, Brooke Hailu, signing off from the farm of, uh, 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 from the Gilbao farm. Thank you. Okay. Professor, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Yoram. I appreciate, I appreciate you. Thank you, Yoram. Thank you. Thank you.